is really responsible for the passage of Obamacare? It isn't the nuns. Recently, Cardinal George chastised Sister Carol Kinn and the Catholic Health Association for breaking with the USCCB and endorsing the abortion-friendly Obamacare law. Current arguments over the passage of Obamacare are still about finger-pointing and assigning blame. Some people are pointing fingers at the betrayal of Bart Stupak. Others assert that Sister Kinn and a bunch of progressive nuns are to blame. The truth is that while all of this blame is well-placed, the real problem is lack of clear leadership from the Catholic hierarchy. But in order to understand the problem, let's start with what happened. Bart Stupak was viewed by most as the stop loss against Obamacare. He swore up and down that he would not vote for it as long as provisions remained for the funding of abortions. However, Nancy Pelosi somehow convinced him that an executive order would make things all better. So, encouraged by progressive nuns and empty promises, he and his fellow holdouts flipped sides and voted for the bill, forcing this unprecedented law on everyone. Which leads us to Sister Kian and her entourage. Stupak was emboldened to vote for Obamacare when Sister Kian and a list of 60 religious orders signed a public statement of endorsement. Despite the fact that every version of Obamacare expanded provisions for abortion, sex education, and birth control, Sister Kian discussed her support for Obamacare last August with Raymond Arroyo and Judy Brown. We're working closely with our bishops and have been working with our bishops for years now. We have said very clearly, we will compromise our preferences. We will not compromise our principles. Mm -hmm. And CHA has been on record clearly. We will sacrifice our, sacrifice our preferences, not our principles. Mm -hmm. I promise you, there will be no way that we will allow ourselves to compromise our principles after Sister Kian compromised her principles without sacrificing her preferences, she received one of 21 ceremonial pens used for signing the bill into law. To paraphrase St. Thomas More, Sister Kian, it profits a man nothing to give his soul for the whole world. But for a pen? And just so you understand how influential these nuns were in that final push to pass Obamacare, their ringing endorsement gave the fence sitters in Washington all the support they needed in order to vote for the bill. But there was a huge momentum shift um, when Network uh, came on board and, and really, I think, gave everybody a lot of confidence. And then over the last couple of days, we pulled in a, probably the last six or eight pro-life members of Congress. I'm pleased that we got a letter from uh, representing 60 leaders of uh, uh, religious orders, sisters, saying that we, they wanted to pass, wanted us to pass this life-affirming legislation. Uh, the Catholic Health, Health Association, the Order of Nuns support, uh, I think is very important. I mean, I do have to give a shout out to the nuns. Well, I say the church was yes, divided uh, because the, if the bishops were not with you, the That's nuns right. were. That was a tremendous sign. Okay, so Stupak and his buddies voted for Obamacare because they trusted Pelosi, Obama, and a bunch of progressive nuns. The progressive nuns pushed for Obamacare because they trusted Pelosi and a bunch of other pro-abortion politicians who crafted the bill. But the nuns all claimed that they were working with the bishops and adhering to Catholic principles, so what happened? The USCCB, desperately wanting to see universal health care passed, led the Catholic charge in trusting pro-abortion politicians and focused their efforts on maintaining abortion neutrality. So they issued a document titled, Making Healthcare Reform Abortion Neutral. What is the legal status quo on abortion? With this emphasis, the USCCB publicly supported abortion neutral versions of the bill, even though each one drastically expanded funding for birth control, contraceptive sex education, and even redefined euthanasia. Why did the USCCB ignore these equally wicked provisions deciding to remain abortion neutral? And since when did Jesus ever call upon his apostles to maintain the status quo? As Fulton Sheen said so often, dead bodies float downstream. It takes a living body to stand against the currents. The fact of the matter is this. The Obamacare law was not abortion neutral, and even though the USCCB eventually did stand against this current, it was too little too late. The momentum swept the nuns and the fence sitters downstream. And now, we have the greatest expansion of funding for abortion, birth control, and sex education this country has ever seen. 
The Catholic leadership can assign all the blame that they want, but we have Obamacare in large part due to the USCCB's willingness to make a deal with the pro-abortion princes of this world and their failure from the beginning to stand up to the fullness of the truth of the Catholic faith. For American Life League, I'm Michael Hitchborn.